Joining me right now, Foreign Affairs commentator Adam Roosevelt. He joins us from Dubai. Adam, it's great to see you, especially um, after your wedding. Congratulations, by the way. Thank you so much. It's good to be with you. And, you know, we hope this conflict comes to, to a point of neutrality. It's definitely good to be with you and the viewers. Yes, indeed. A pleasure. As a veteran U.S. officer, what goes through your mind when you see these videos being released by Israel showing its attacks on Gaza? Well, I can first say that I have seen a number of videos coming from both sides, uh, particularly to answer your question, how I feel seeing uh, the strikes. I understand the objective militarily, but I think from a civilian perspective, it's very difficult to see uh, the kind of carnage back and forth from these type of attacks. Again, the military objective is to eradicate Hamas, but I think now that we are seeing the reality of war, I think that it's very difficult for the civilians globally to digest uh, this level of, you know, carrying out military operations. And I think it's very difficult for the globe, which is now causing us to call for um, ceasefires, if you will. Some may say that does this have to do with accountability or is it a boastful move by the Israeli army to boost the morale of its citizens in one way or perhaps its military personnel and reservists that have been called back to fight this war? Well, I can tell you that I have been in conversation with government officials on uh, the side of Israeli just to get an understanding about what is the objective. And I think given the brutality of the attack, their objective, based on what I'm hearing from the officials, is that they need to move strong. They need to make sure they establish confidence amongst the Israeli population. We know that these attacks have been very heinous, but they need to have the kind of support from the Israeli population if they're going to continue this war effort forward. And this shows that they are willing and ready to go as far as necessary to protect their sovereignty. And that is really their objective. And they're using this campaign to instill confidence in the population across uh, Israel. Leaders across have been calling for a ceasefire for humanitarian purposes. Israel is refusing um, to even consider it. When it comes to war strategy, um, should they think about a ceasefire, especially to allow humanitarian aid reach those in need? Well, I'll say this. Now that it is a full-blown military operation, ceasefire, it is very difficult to enter into at this moment. Right now, the international community will call for that, but the Israeli Defense Forces will carry out the objective of eliminating Hamas at all costs. If they call for the ceasefire from a military perspective, they will be allowing for Hamas to remain uh, in Gaza. And effectively, that means that they could rebuild their forces in the future and carry out a similar attack, but probably with more lethality in the future. So now this military operation is to eradicate, disrupt, and destroy Hamas. And, and effectively, there will be casualties, but they're on a full-blown military operation. Now we need to call for what I call red zones, green zones, and yellow zones to allow for humanitarian conversations to take place. But one also wonders, with all of this bombardment, what happens to those that have been captured by Hamas? Well, I think we've seen some new developments with the release of several prisoners, which is a positive uh, step forward. But I think we're going to need a lot more steps forward. I am personally receiving lists with children uh, from the nine months to one years old, three year olds, up to nine to 12. And it's, it's very sad to see these names on these lists uh, that are in custody right now with Hamas. Uh, there are a lot of efforts going on to negotiate through back channels with you know, the Palestinian leadership as well as Hamas directly, but it's gonna be a very difficult time. I think there's a priority of release, which is Americans, and then there will be other special groups like elderly uh, and so forth before we start to see a larger group of release of hostages. I want to talk about what happened last night at the UN Security Council. Um, Secretary General Antonio Guterres had made an appeal to Israel once again for humanitarian aid into Gaza, which resulted in UN officials being persona non grata in Israel and criticism of his comments. Um, what do you think was happening in the room? 
generally speaking at the political level less is more and at this point these type of statements are being scrutinized for every single word and sentence because each of these statements mean more than what probably the public consumption understands and when the statement was made from uh, the United Nations Security Council Secretary General this was not done in a vacuum it leaves a lot of room for open interpretation you put out and seen uh, the Israeli uh, ambassador come out with sharp comments about how he feels now calling for the resignation of the secretary general if he doesn't apologize they are at a state of emotion that is very difficult and they're not looking for the united nations to downplay or dilute the reality and you will see some tension in terms of strategic communication if there is not aggressive language that is in favor of one or other side of the issue Another thing I've often wondered um, about the United Nations role in this war is hard to sit on the fence, especially as Israel has been appealed upon for years regarding Palestine. What should the United Nations do now? I think the United Nations must call for humanitarian uh, corridors. And then we need to get very strategic about how we execute the plan for that. And that's why I'm calling for green zones yellow zones and red zones, which are designated locations that we can move uh, certain hostages in negotiation with Hamas. These are new ways to tactically uh, negotiate with Hamas to make sure we can get this humanitarian corridor open and get them out to neighboring states like Jordan and Egypt. And this is going to be important, but the UN must stand strong to be a mediator, but they cannot take sides. They need to advocate for Palestinians. They need to advocate for anti-terrorism. They need to advocate for peace and security. These are the major priorities, and the UN must stand by their mandate, which is global peace and security, but do not leave the Palestinians out of the conversation. We'll continue to monitor the situation and hope for a much better outcome. Foreign Affairs commentator Adam Roosevelt, always a pleasure. Thanks for joining us on the program. Thank you so much. Stay